Yeah. Okay, awesome. Good afternoon. I hope all of you are awake. I can't see because I can't see all of you. Yeah, you're awake? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Alright, so of course I just wanted to um, share about the fact that when I first became a teacher, um, as a teacher you always think you're going out to impart knowledge on students, right? And I think that everyone here who are teachers or even all of your professors would agree that teaching is the best profession in the world. Not because of what you teach, but everything that you get to learn. So now that I'm nice and old and I've been teaching for five years, I just the biggest lessons that I've learned in my life. One, the first thing is about the purpose of life. How many of you think you know what the purpose of life is? Not so many. How many of you are curious what the purpose of life is? Yeah, quite a few. Okay, awesome. I'm going to tell you the purpose of life. Ready? The purpose of life is to seek and spread happiness. Everything that we do as human beings is in that pursuit of happiness. Whether it's hanging out with friends, whether it's attending TED Talks, whether it's um, spending time with their family, whether it's learning, whatever it is, it's in the eventual pursuit of happiness. And even when you think about, oh, I want to make money, why do you want to do that? So that you can be happy. Oh, I want to learn, why do you want to do that? So you can be happy, right? And I believe that these lessons are best learned from people who really embody this. So I would like to share the story of Pinky, who was one of our girls who came to Kranti at age 13. And she'd been trafficked and actually sold at the age of nine. And she has a lot of severe mental health issues, and she's one of those girls who never will be considered successful by the world. But when I look at Pinky, all I see is that she spends 90% of her day laughing and making all the people around her laugh. And when I look at her, I realize that despite everything that she's been through and everything that she's faced her entire life, she still has the ability to spend the majority of her day laughing and spreading happiness to everyone around her. And for that, I'm really incredibly thankful to, um, to Pinky. The second thing I've learned is about success. What is success? I think success should be measured in the number of lives that we positively impact. I would like to share the lesson that I've learned from Shito. Shito came to us at age 17, and she had only studied in 4th and 7th at that point. And we tried to put her through 10th, and she kept failing. Um, so eventually we let her put academics aside and pursue what her passion was, which was drumming. So we applied to music schools all over India, and nobody would accept her because they said she hasn't passed 10th, she doesn't speak English well enough, she, you know, she won't fit into the social class. So then we applied abroad, and she ended up getting a full scholarship to study drumming and music in Washington for a year. So she ended up going to Washington and spending a year there. And when she came back, she, um, she now works as a music therapist, working with kids using the djembe to do drum circles in Pune, actually. And she works with an organization called Talink, and she has been doing um, you know, drumming circles for kids, particularly from NGOs. And to me, when I look at success, to me, success is the smile on Shito's face when she's drumming and the smile on the kids' faces when they hold a drum for the first time. And I know that when I look at Shito, she's never going to be considered successful by the regular world, right? She has passed 12th since then. Um, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time saying all this because Shito is right in front of me, sitting here in the front row. <laughs> so, so, Shito, thank you for teaching me about success. Um, the third thing that I have learned is what a meaningful life is. And I think that we're all looking for meaning in our lives, but we're never going to find it until we learn that our life has a bigger meaning beyond ourselves. And as long as we're pursuing things just for ourselves, we're never going to be happy enough. And this I've actually learned from all the sex workers that I've worked with over the past five, six years. These women do sex work because they want their, they want their kids to study in English, they want their kids to live anywhere besides Kamajpur, the red light area. They want their kids to have office jobs and be happy. And when these sex workers wake up every day, they go to work every single day because they're living for somebody that's beyond themselves. And I could never in my life possibly thank those sex workers for what I've learned. You know, I think when we go out to do, uh, to do charity work or do social work, we always have this concept of something that we're giving. But I think that every single one of these stories just shows to me that it's all about what you, what you receive and what you learn. So you're probably wondering what um, someone with an American accent is doing in the red light area of Mumbai. And um, I am from America. And I did grow up in a house uh, with, you know, the American dream. Uh, we had a gigantic house, two cars in the garage, we even had a cat. And my house was full of domestic violence and abuse, and both of my parents had mental illnesses. My mom has schizophrenia and uh, my father was bipolar. 
And some of my earliest childhood memories are of my parents burning each other with irons. And even as a very young kid, as a 9, 10, 11 year old, you know, stuck in that house, I was just constantly looking around thinking, if this is what the American dream is, and what we're all taught in school, right? Why do you need to do well in school so you can go to a good college? Why do you need to go to a good college so you can have a nice job? Why do you need that nice job so you can have a nice house? Blah, 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 blah. Now, I had all of those things in front of me, and yet nobody in my house was happy. So at a very young age, I started kind of this quest for figuring out, you know, what is it? What is it that brings happiness if it's not these things? And eventually, that was what led me to the red light area of Mumbai, which actually led me to quite a few different NGOs all around the world. Um, I've traveled over 100 countries and spent a lot of time volunteering. And funnily enough, you know what? I found that it is people like those sex workers in Kamatipura, and it is kids, um, you know, in NGOs all across the world who are some of the happiest people I've ever encountered regardless of the fact that they don't have what we consider the basics of life. So my lessons, I would like to leave you with those lessons today, which is basically about seeking and spreading happiness. The purpose of life, I think, is to seek and spread happiness. I would like to encourage all of you to find what makes you happy and go out and seek and spread happiness. I would like to encourage all of you to redefine success. Success is not lay in our houses and our cars and our phones and all of those things. It lays in you know, the number of positive lives that you impact. And third, to go out and live a meaningful life, because as long as we're living for ourselves, we're never going to find meaning. So thank you very much, and please seek and spread happiness. Which they are. 